Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, with no further delay, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sumin Chang, who's a staff cardiologist at Methodist, and uh, his specialty is cardiac CT and nuclear cardiology, and today he's going to be talking to us about cardiac CT. Okay, an overview first. Uh, well, CT was uh, uh, invented a long time ago, obviously, but not until recently we started applying in cardiovascular uh, medicine, and the main reason is obviously study of the coronary artery. That's the main driver of all the technology that we're using today, just to look at the coronary arteries. And uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of indications, new advances, and non-coronary applications. Uh, the main reason why the coronary CTA, I think, will become very so popular is, is uh, due to the fact that 60% of uh, diagnostic catheterization done in this country, according to this paper published in New England Journal of Medicine, has no significant stenosis. So, uh, you know, two-thirds of pay patients go to the cath lab, and a lot of them could have been avoided uh, if we have some type of non-invasive testing to serve as gatekeeper for uh, invasive and more uh, ex expensive uh, procedure. So last year, my, my slides, 80% of them are talk about this appropriate criteria, but I thought it was too many, so I promise uh, you're gonna see 80% of my slides will be pictures. So this is the 2010. This hasn't been updated recently. Uh, just to let you know, we are lagging. We, in, our, in the United States, we're lagging behind the European in terms of uh, uh, applying the coronary CTA as the first test for, uh, for assessment or management of patients with suspected coronary disease. Uh, in England, uh, the NICE guideline already established, regardless of the pretest likelihood of disease, any patient who do not have uh, established coronary disease presented with chest pain to the clinic, the first test of uh, recommendation is coronary CTA. So we're way behind. I don't know what will happen in this country, but we'll see. All right, so all right. So this is probably the main application that we have for coronary CTA in this country is the detection of coronary disease with symptom and low to intermediate pretest likelihood, okay? We still recommend patients to go to cardiac catheterization if they have high pretest likelihood. Or if they have an interpreter ECG or you have conflicting data between the exercise information and the uh, imaging uh, testing like echo or nuclear. And the reason is uh, CT really give you beautiful picture. I mean, this is uh, to the point that uh, some People caution, it could be the uh, you know, song of sirens. If it's too beautiful, you might believe everything you see. But true to the fact that in a well, well, well done study in an adequate patient, it gives you a negative predictive value of close to 99, 98%, meaning that if you do not see any coronary stenosis in a CT angiogram, you can almost 100% sure the patient does not have significant coronary stenosis. But obviously, with all the caveat, you need to do a good study. And also, the advances like this, um, case, for instance, this would be a very good uh, case to illustrate that uh, in a lot of patients with low, uh, low pretest likelihood, uh, oftentimes you go to the clinic, you have a little bit of chest pain, you do the stress test, they don't come back till like a week. So by the time you see them back a month later, uh, a lot of things could happen. And I think most of us, if I go to the at my cardiology to have chest pain, I would like to know if I have coronary disease as soon as possible. So you can imagine if I have this technology in your clinic, and you can do it like right away, it could be pretty powerful in management, okay? And, but, and, and now it's, uh, it's a reality that the CT scanner could be uh, purchased and, and placed in the office, uh, so we'll see. And so this is just some examples of uh, uh, what CTA can show you in patients presented with chest pain, uh, like this patient with uh, uh, basically, you know, hypertension and chest pain, uh, the ED, and we do a CT right away and uh, find out very tight uh, left main stenosis when this patient went to OR right away. Um, so those are positive uh, testing. Uh, and again, we could have this is a similar, and you, the other main uh, strength of CT is you can assess the plaque semi-quantitatively, okay? Uh, instead of doing uh, IVIS, uh, OCT, uh, CTA is the only technology, non-invasive technology, who allow you to assess not only stenosis, but plaque burden, 
and there are more and more and more data showing that plaque burden in totality is, is much more predictive than presence of stenosis in predicting outcome. So, so we will probably in the future quantify, in addition to calcium score, uh, total amount of plaque that we can see in the CTA. Um, this is just another view of this. And the other main reason, uh, the, the bonus of doing a CTA that is different from echo, stress echo, stress nuclear, you can see other part of the chest. I mean, a like patient come with chest pain in the ED, you have, in the left-hand side you have an example of PE, uh, you have uh, dissections, you have huge hydrohernia and pneumonia. So not common, but, uh, but let's say common enough for you to, to, to give us as important uh, positive aspect of using a CTA. Um, the other thing is Dr. Lin's uh, fetish, obviously, congenital heart disease. And, and uh, he, he doesn't say that, but he likes CT more than MRI, I think. That's true. But no, just joking, okay. Um, this is a case, uh, it's not done here. Uh, a patient I saw when I was in University of Wisconsin, uh, a Big Ten uh, college athlete, run was training in the track and field, had a syncope episode, uh, had EF about 45, 49% anterior wall hypokinesis, and uh, obviously he has a very uh, interesting anomaly of uh, origin, the left main come out from the pulmonary arteries and it's amazing how uh, a kid can adapt to, to the point that he can run. Imagine if he doesn't have the symptom, he'd probably be an Olympic team, right? Uh, so uh, con for congenital anomaly, I think in CTA, uh, it's a di diagnosis test of choice at this stage, I think. With very low dose scan, uh, you can achieve 100% diagnostic accuracy. Even with non contra CT, you can pretty much have good diagnostic confidence of 80 to 90 percent to see the patient had anomalous origin of the either left or right coronary. Maybe not left circumflex, but uh, the ori anomalous origin of left main or right R RCA could be diagnosed with non contra CT. Uh, this is just another case of a uh, uh, patient with uh, single coronary arteries. All the coronary circulation is covered by the RCA. It's interesting the patient also had that, uh, evidence of literary ischemia in the anterior epical wall where probably uh, the right RCA just did not reach that far, and, but she managed to live to the age of 60s with, without any problem. Uh, but the most exciting thing about CT is the cardiac instead of coronary. So the structure and function, I think this is truly the golden age of uh, structural heart intervention and the CT play a, a fundamental role for diagnosis, management, even treatment. Uh, so I'll show you real quickly. Um, uh, so this is, this is a case of patient with sh uh, young patients coming in with chest pain, troponin elevation, and ST changes, had most likely Takasubo. Uh, so, uh, so do a real dose -do CTA, you got the diagnosis the next, you know, the next day. Uh, so we move on, we know that she has, she has some type of uh, uh, gastric tears due to psychiatric di disorder and forced vomiting. So uh, it's interesting, uh, Takasubo. And the other, the other main indication that we all often overlook is to establish the etiology of patient with recent diagnosis of di dilated chiromyopathy. Uh, used to be we do a stress, se stress test or go to cath lab directly, but now if the patient does not have history of coronary disease or established myocardial infarction, uh, I don't know why it's not playing. Okay, so this is the patient that I saw personally, 40, 49 years old with risk factor, and you know, uh, EF is low, and coronary CTA, this is uh, it's almost eight years ago, in the early, age, early stage, I was doing the CTA, coronary disease, did not have that significant coronary disease. And patient at ECHO has some <coughs> posterior wall dysfunction, so we all thought oh, this could have disease. And the surgeon didn't obviously believe it, and the order, uh, Diagnosis angiogram, unfortunately, it's not playing. Okay. Uh, all right. P effectively, patient did not have coronary disease. So essentially, <laughs> uh, no, he has some disease, but no significant stenosis. Not enough to, to explain what EF is 30, 35%. And that's very important because patient have dilated chiromyopathy. I mean, 
if you do a CTA and they do not have left main or proximal LAD disease, I mean, it's highly unlikely. Or extensive three vessel disease is highly unlikely. That, you know, the, the, the etiology is due to uh, uh, coronary disease. But anyway, um, so this is just one of the uh, only data I'm going to show you showing that uh, coronary CTA is very, very accurate in diagnosing, establishing the etiology of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, either ischemic or non ischemic. Um, so a couple of new advances in technology. Uh, CT is like the sports car of all the imaging te technology, okay? You can obtain coverage from neck to the groin in a dull person in less than two seconds. So in two seconds, the study is done. I mean, it takes longer to put the ECG leads on. So obviously it takes another two hours to read it, but uh, in terms of establishing, in terms of sta in, instead of establishing and, and performing the, the test is very uh, patient friendly. Let's put it this way, okay? Uh, again, again, uh, obviously, we've got one of the major disadvantages we need to give contrast, but with a newer scanner in selected patient, you can achieve a, a cardiac CT with a doses as low as 30 milliliter. And there's some people even pushing the envelope with a newer uh, dual energy CT. You can even perform a CTA and with 20, 20 cc, even 10 milli cc of, uh, of contrast. Um, this is just a quick case, a patient we did uh, with the newer scanner, the radiation dosage is almost um, neg negligible, I would say. Uh, for instance, this patient got a, a, a dosage of 0 0.65 millisievert. So by living in Houston, uh, the, ex the environmental exposure, the dosage is 2 to 3 millisievert. So, uh, so it's about one-fifth, so it's about three, 2 to 3 months of uh, environmental exposure. So after this test, I told the patient, Stay inside the house, don't go out for three months, and <laughs> we the same. Anyway, so this is another very exciting development. It's called CTFFR, uh, it's non-invasive FFR. The beauty of this test is you can just get a resting CT, and you can get an estimated FFR. And for this came out, we thought it was kind of like black magic, right? I mean, you can do a just resting study, and you can, all, the computer can spit out what would the invasive FFR could tell you. The correlation is not perfect, obviously, like all, all the testing, but in, in a well-done study, the correlation is in the, around 0. you know, 80 percent, 85 percent, but the most importantly, and that, there's tons of technology, ton of literature is coming out right now showing that it saves money, and even in Europe, they're doing a study trying to compare to patient get a CTA versus invasive angiogram to determine, you know, uh, revascularization procedure guided by CTFFR versus just invasive angiogram, which one has better outcome. And the number looks pretty, pretty much the same. So patient basically get a CTA instead of an invasive angiogram. Okay, last thing, uh, I'm gonna show you some nice, uh, I think uh, I won't be able to impress you because none of my slides is playing, uh, none of my clips are playing, uh, which play perfectly in my laptop. All right, um, so Basically, uh, in patients uh, with complication from endocarditis, like this patient uh, had, a, had a prostate ring and had perforation, you can see very well in the CT. If patient with LT dissection, we can do dynamic imaging. Uh, obviously, patient now, uh, uh, all the surgeons and interventional cardiology want 4D CT. Uh, you can see the for assessment of clot forming in, in LT valve. Uh, we can, is, CT is the best technology to assess um, extra cardiac complication or device with related complication with left ventricular assist device. And assessment of RV function is becoming a more important application of CT in this group of patients. Uh, but the most exciting thing is integration of CT uh, into, uh, in the cath lab, which Dr. Lin is the expert in, 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 in this field. And, uh, that's why he likes CT a lot, because he allows him to, to perform, uh, obviously, this is a mitral valve procedure, allows you to um, plan and also guide you during the, uh, uh, the procedures. And I'm very sorry that I could not show you this uh, very nice slide. So this is a patient who had a, a paravalvular leak after mitral valve uh, replace, uh, repair. You see the ring there. Uh, he went, she went to the cath lab three times. You can see all different type of plugs. And, uh, you know, uh, so I'll leave you with this last picture. I'm very sorry I need to leave. But that's my email. 
feel free to email me or Dr. Lane will be able to give my contact if you're interested. How many of you guys have CT in your program? How many are run by cardiologists? Good, good. All right, all right. Any question? Thank you.